Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. We're asked for the function's domain, range, x-intercepts, y-intercept, and the value f of 2. So let's start with the domain. So domain is the x values. We want it when we're doing x values, we're going furthest point to the left to furthest point to the right. So here's the furthest point to the left. Here's the furthest point to the right. And I'm going to kind of project it down to the x-axis. So here is this, this pair of coordinates appears to be 0, negative 1. And this pair of coordinates appears to be 3, 8. All right, so when we're talking about domain, we're talking about x values. So the furthest point to the left has an x value of 0. The furthest point to the right has an x value of 3. And we want everything in between. Are we including zero? Yes, because there's a closed dot. We actually have a point on the graph zero, negative one. But this open dot here indicates three, eight is not actually a point on the function. It's a boundary, but we don't actually hit it. So we're gonna indicate that on our interval that three is not actually in our domain. It's just a boundary of it. So we're gonna put a parenthesis there. Left to right, wall to wall is our domain. And now let's find our range. Thinking bottom to top or floor to ceiling, we're gonna go the bottom of it to the top of it. So we hit every point in between, which means we're gonna hit every y value in between. In between what? Well, this again was the point um, zero, negative one, and this was the point three, eight. So the lowest y value this time is negative one. And it goes all the way up to the highest y value 8. You gotta go in numerical order, left to right in interval notation. All right, now, are we including negative 1? Yes, because again, that's a closed dot. Are we including 8? No, because it's an open dot. Okay, now let's find the x intercepts, if any. We look across the x-axis and we see if the graph intersects it which it does and it does so at this point here which appears to be the point one comma zero right and so our x-intercept is one comma zero by the way you should always have a zero for your y-coordinate of your x-intercept and a zero for your x-coordinate of your y-intercept all right so let's find the y-intercept if there is one which there is we see here so looking along the y -axis, axis this time, we definitely intersect the graph at the point 0, negative 1. So that's going to be our y-intercept. 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1. And now let's find f of 2. f of 2, we're looking for the x value is 2. What is the y value? We're looking for a pair of coordinates to something. So we go over to 2 on our x-axis. We go up to the graph. We see we do hit something there. What do those coordinates appear to be? 2, 1, 2, 3. So it looks like f of 2 is 3. It goes through 2, 3. So the missing unknown y value is 3. All right, here we're being asked to find several things. When we talk about domain, we're talking about the x values. So we have to determine wall to wall what x values this is going to hit. Now keep in mind the arrow is indicating it's going to continue, right? So furthest point to the left, well, there isn't one. It goes on forever out to negative infinity. The domain is going to include all the numbers out to negative infinity. And then what's the furthest point to the right? Again, there isn't one. It continues onward. So it goes out to positive infinity. So one way we could explain this is to say that the domain is all real numbers. Or in interval notation, how do we describe a set that goes on the number line all the way from negative infinity to infinity? We would say interval parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, infinity, close parenthesis. So that's the domain. Now let's analyze the range. Range is y values, which would go bottom to top. And again, this is going to continue downward, and but it doesn't continue upward. There's going to be a, high, a no lowest point, but there's definitely a highest point. So our y values go from down here at negative infinity up to the highest point, which the highest point on this graph is this point, 4, negative 1. If that's the highest point on the graph, 4, negative 1, what's the highest y value? Well, that's the negative 1. So what we're saying is that we're going all the way from negative infinity up to negative 1. 
from here to here. Each one of those y values exists in one of the points on this function. For example, here's the point looks like um, 7, negative 4. So the negative 4 is one of the y values between negative infinity and negative 1. Here's the point 0, negative 5. Negative 5 is another num one of the numbers between negative infinity and negative 1. But we can't list them all, so we can use um, different, we have different options, but in interval notation, this would be negative infinity up to negative 1. And we're actually including the negative 1 because there actually is a point on the function with a y value of negative 1. So we're going to have a bracket there to indicate we're including that point. Okay, so that was part B. We were finding the range of the function. Now let's find part C, x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are points where the function hits the x-axis, but there are none on this one. So for part C, we would say none, no x-intercepts, and y-intercept, if any. So y-intercept is any point where the graph hits the y-axis. We see that happens here at 0, negative 5. So the y-intercept... Part D is going to be 0, negative 5. Or in my math lab, they might just ask you for the number negative 5. I'm not sure. But technically, it's a pair of coordinates with the x coordinate being 0. All right, and now they ask us for our function values f of 3 and f of 5. So let's start with f of 3. Remember, that's telling us we're plugging into f the x value 3. So let's go to our graph and figure out if any of the points have an x value 3. Here, about here would be 3. Oh yeah, look, the graph has a point down there that has an x-coordinate of 3. It looks like it's 3, 1, 2, negative 2. So f of 3 is negative 2 is another way of saying it goes through the point 3, negative 2. And now let's find f of 5. That's another question in part E. I'm going to go over to 5, go down here. We see that it does hit the graph, and it looks like 5 also has a, um, when x is 5, the y coordinate appears to also be negative 2. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.